I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't even really want to leave the bedroom. Going out to do grocery shopping, I prayed I wouldn't run into anybody because I literally go into an anxiety attack if I had to talk to someone, friends, people I'd known for years. I just basically went off the grid for about, uh, about three or four months there. Over the last almost 20 years, the region has been dealing with an uphill battle. We've had 20 years of drought. We've had commodity prices that haven't gone up in 10, 15 years. The stress of handing the family farm ranch down to the next generation, you know, farming's becoming more and more expensive. Mortgages and loans are getting higher and higher and making ends meet is difficult. And what we're finding is an increase in anxiety, an increase in depression, and ultimately an increase in suicide for our region and many rural frontier regions across the nation now. The drought was very hard. It impacted us pretty much starting in 2000 and had some really bad years. In 2013 and 2014, we did not grow wheat, we did not grow milo, and we did not have cattle. Those were two years that were very hard for us because we had no income. When I was growing up, you could probably buy a tractor for ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Now then, you may pay a quarter of a million dollars for a tractor. You may pay a half a million dollars for a combine. So it's a high stakes game. Lots of pressure and not always a lot of uh, revenue. A lot of our youth, they don't come back, and I think that kind of gets really depressing. When you see main streets get boarded up and you see businesses go out, no new businesses coming back in. The farm and ranch community, they like to live independently. They like to live quietly. But because we choose that way, when things get difficult, we don't know how to reach out. So when depression starts to set in, what we do is we turn inward and we isolate ourselves even more. If we need to borrow a baler or we need to borrow a horse trailer or somebody watch our livestock while we take a vacation or a weekend away, those are easy conversations and that's how we tap into the friendships. But we don't do it when it has to do with emotional issues. As they say, nobody wants their pickup to be seen out in front of the mental health clinic, so it's getting people in the door to actually talk because there's still that stigma where it's like, we, we want the help, maybe we recognize we need the help, but we don't want everyone knowing we went in to get the help. When I went into my difficulty with anxiety and depression, I didn't even realize I was doing it. I mean, I had read about it, I had heard about it, I knew that it was an issue, but it was like a wake-up call for me that I didn't even see the warning signs until it happened. I think we need professionals and people with more understanding to see some of those signals that different people are showing that we're not picking up on and have a, a better insight to prevent this uh, from happening in our area because the suicides are devastating. Everybody feels guilty. If I would have done this, if I would have done that. And I know even myself, a lot of times I've thought, you know, if I would have just gone out of my way to go and visit with them. And some of them I had visited with a day before, but evidently I didn't connect with them. Everybody blames themselves for it because you would like to bring that person back. You weren't ready for them to go. You loved them, you cared for them, and you cared for the people that loved them also.
former commissioner of Colorado Agriculture, Don Brown, saw what was happening. So he talked to Governor Hickenlooper, and they approached Colorado Farm Bureau, Rocky Mountain Farmers Union, Colorado State University Extension, and they looked at the crisis line that they had and recognized that when people did call in for help, Oftentimes, it's like they're not going to have a clue what we're talking about. They don't understand what I'm going through. So they've implemented some training to assist the call center people to actually have a sense of what is going on with the egg lifestyle and why there's certain unique stressors. What we're doing to try to address these barriers is, one, we're trying to get a more stable presence in our far-reaching communities, our most remote communities, for example, Eads, Colorado, and Springfield. We're trying to get a brick and mortar opportunities in, in communities so that people don't have more than a 30 minute or 30 mile drive to get care. We're putting on uh, trainings and educational opportunities that are focused specifically on the ag population. We're doing ag campaigns in newspapers that are more, most likely to reach that population. Everyone's story is different, and everyone's path is different, and how they get there is different than what I did, and how they get out of it is going to be different. But there's a lot of similarities. And um, if I can help somebody else to realize that there is a better place, that you, you know, it's not the end, and that you can move on. Those people that have gone on were important to us, and the people here, we want them to see them live full lives, not shortened lives.